Good morning, math friends. We are back today with lesson 9.5. And today we're going to practice using the break apart strategy for multiplying bigger numbers. We've done the break apart strategy with um, smaller numbers. Today we're going to practice using the same strategy for larger numbers. So we'd like to start with our slate work on your piece of paper. I'd like you to write down two different ways you could break apart the number 38 into two or more add-ins. That means you could break apart 38 into what plus what, or even what plus what plus what. Go ahead and write down two different ways. So one way you could break apart 38, probably the most automatic way you would think about this is 30 plus 8. Another way you could think about breaking apart 38 would be 30 plus 4 plus 4. That's two different ways you could break apart 38. Would you write down two ways you could break apart 63? Good. You probably wrote down 60 plus 3. And you could have written down 30 plus 30 plus 3. Let's try a few more. Please write down two ways that you could break apart 356. How about 300 plus 50 plus 6. Or how about 200 plus 150 plus 6. And let's try 580. How could you break apart 580 into two or more add-ends? Exactly. 580 would be 500 plus 80. Or maybe 500 plus 40 plus 40. Now, of course, those are not the only ways. There are many ways you could break them apart, but these are broken into easy to work with numbers. We're going to try two more. Would you break apart 650 into two or more add-ins twice? The easiest one to see, I think, would be 600 plus 50. Or maybe 600 plus 25 plus 25. And finally, 902. How could you break apart 902 two different ways? Yes, 900 plus 2. And then maybe 500 plus 400 plus 2. All right, next I'd like you to open up your journals to page 286. 286. It says, Jonah's garden is a rectangle with 16 rows for plants. He wants to plant two sections, one with 10 rows of carrots and the other with six rows of beans. Partition or break apart the rectangle and label the sections carrots and beans to show how Jonah could plant his garden. And there's a picture of jo Jonah's garden on the page. So when we look at Jonah's garden and I have on the screen what you see on your page, you can see that there are 16 rows. You know that rows go across. So there are 16 rows and there are nine columns, columns, if you count it across. So he wants to plant 10 rows of carrots 
and six rows of beans. Would you go ahead and split that garden apart and label carrots and beans? Fantastic. If you need to hit pause to continue labeling your garden on your page, go ahead. But I've done it on the screen and you can see that I have six rows of beans, 10 rows of carrots. How many seeds can Jonah plant all together? Let's go back and look. If he has six rows of beans, that's a six by nine rectangle. Six times nine is 54. So he can plant 54 beans. For carrots, he has 10 rows. So 10 times nine is 90 carrot plants. All together, how many plants? We would need to add 54 plus 90 to equal 144. So on your page for number two, how many seeds can he plant all together? The answer is 144. Go ahead and fill in your page if you need to and hit pause. I'm gonna go ahead and show you some more practice with breaking apart or partitioning bigger numbers for multiplying. The next question says, Meg bought seven boxes of crackers. Each box had 62 crackers. How many crackers did Meg buy? If we thought about this as, say, a garden or even an array, what we're talking about is a 7 by 62, which is what you see on the screen. But most of us would have a hard time multiplying 7 times 62, so I think we should break apart 62 into some easier numbers. Just like we did on our warm-up, it seems like the best way to break apart 62 might be thinking of it as 60 and two. Then we can think of seven times 60, and I see the basic fact in there is seven times six, so 42 tens is 420. And then I have seven times two, which is 14. So when I add together 420 plus 14, the answer is 400. 34. And since this is a number story, I will add the unit crackers. Let's try it some more. We're going to use the break apart strategy to solve some more multiplication problems. And we're going to use the strategy we just did of drawing rectangles and breaking up those rectangles. Let's look at the first one together. It says, use the break apart strategy to solve 7 times 24. So if I have a rectangle that's 7 by 24, I might think of breaking that rectangle up into, what would you guess? Yes, 20 and 4. So then it's much easier to do 7 times 20 is 140. And 7 times 4, which is 28. And then I would add those two products to find 168. So 7 times 24 equals 168. Let's practice again. 
use the break apart strategy to solve four times 36. So if I have four times 36 or a four by 36 rectangle, I'm gonna break apart that 36 side into perhaps what? 30 and six. Now it's much easier to multiply four times 30, 120, and four times six is 24. So I can add those two products, 120 plus 24 is 144. So my answer to four times 36 is 144. Let's try one more together. How about eight times 57? Eight times 57. If I have a rectangle, an eight by 57 rectangle, I could break apart into 50 and seven, of course. Let's practice this time though, breaking it into three parts. So maybe I break it into 50, five and two. So this would be 50, this would be five, and this would be two. So now I have eight times 50 is 400. Eight times five is 40. And eight times two is 16. Oop. So now I need to add three products together. 400 plus 40 plus 16 equals 456. Now, 456 would be the same answer if we started by breaking 57 into just whoop, 50 and 7. So 8 times 50 is 400. 8 times 7 is 56, and if I add those two products, I get the same answer of 456. Either way you break apart 57, you're going to come up with 456. All right, look on journal page 287. 200 87. It says decomposing factors to multiply. And remember that decomposing is just another word for breaking apart. The directions say, use the break apart strategy to solve the multiplication problems. Think of easier multiplication problems that you can use to break apart the larger factor. This is just like what we've been doing. Draw rectangles and write number sentences to show your thinking. So let's look at number one. 7 times 24 equals what? I can break what into what? So I would break apart 24, the bigger number, of course. I can break 24 into 20 plus 4. And then it says to draw the rectangle. So if I had a 7 by 24, I would label it 7. And 24 would be 20 and 4. I would find both of those areas. 7 times 20 is 140. 7 times 4 is 28. And then remember, we have to add those two together. 28. To come up with an answer of 168. 7 times 24, and I'll write my answer back up here, is 168. All right, I'd like you to complete numbers 2 and 3 on this page just the same way, breaking apart the bigger number into two smaller add-ins and then adding together your products. After you finish this page, move on to Mathbox's 9.5 
and then later today, Homelink 9.5. Have fun, friends. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.